This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Yesterday, Donald Trump was convicted of a crime which doesn't even exist. I'd like to take you back to the history of this terrible travesty of justice which occurred in Manhattan to just show you how corrupt our legal system has become. Independent of who you follow, who you support, this is an absolute nightmare and it shows a, a development which cannot be justified. In no way can it be justified. But God has a lot to say about this and I will talk about this in a moment. But first let's talk about some events leading to this horrible indictment, this horrible conviction. Newsmax wrote on April 23, Mike Huckabee said that a lot of people watching Trump's criminal trial over alleged attempts to hide payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels, you could say forms, uh, porn star, are uh, unconvinced of the former president's guilt. He implied that the ongoing legal cases against Trump might actually win him support from voters. I think a lot of people are watching this trial in New York and are saying, let me see if I get that straight. Hillary, Clin Hillary Clinton clearly was involved in trying to rig the 2016 election by the phony Steele dossier that resulted in the complete fabrication of a story called the Russia hoax, and somehow that was fine. She never got really accused or charged with anything, he said. He continued, Donald Trump is sitting in a New York courtroom for a charge that doesn't even fit in New York and already had run the statute of limitations. They had to make up a legal strategy in order for this to even go to trial. And I think people are saying this is a clear attempt by the current administration to attack a political opponent using the gears of government and it stinks to high heaven. That's how Mr. Huckabee, a pastor, has put it. Breitbart wrote on April 22, Fox News legal analyst Jonathan Turley, by the way a Democrat, said Monday, that former President Donald Trump's New York trial for allegedly falsifying business records is an embarrassment. Turley said, the fact that we are even talking about this case being presented in a New York court leaves me in utter disbelief. You had this misdemeanor under state law that had run out, even if it was a misdemeanor. They zapped it back into life by alleging that there was a campaign finance violation under the federal laws that does not exist. They invented a crime, and I'm going to talk about this in a moment, that they invented it and didn't even inform the defense about it until it was too late for the defense to do anything about that. That's how corrupt that trial was conducted by the prosecution and the judge. The New York Post published on April 16 a commentary by Piers Morgan from England. He is not a conservative either. That's what he wrote. There are many reasons to criticize Donald Trump. But in American presidential history, has, has there ever been a cheaper, more demeaning and utterly pointless attempt to shame and humiliate one of the only 46 men to be president of the United States, he's asking. The whole Stormy Daniels saga is so pathetic. You can have a moral disapproval about it, but the idea that it has now led to a criminal trial where Trump faces up to 10 years in prison, if not more, is ridiculous. It's patently obvious that Manhattan DA Alvin Brack has been driven by political malice. And there is such a stinking hypocrisy about the way Democrats have tried to destroy Trump. Bill Clinton had sex with an intern in the Oval Office when he was a sitting president and paid $850,000 to settle a case with Paula Jones, who accused him of harassing and assaulting her 
while he was Arkansas governor. Yet, I do not remember Clinton enduring any criminal trial. Of course not, because he was a Democrat, you see. Professor Jonathan Turley, also a Democrat, wrote on May 8 in the New York Post, Judge Juan Marchand allowed the prosecutors to get into the details of the affair between Trump and porn star Stormy Daniels, despite the immateriality of the evidence to any criminal theory, the value of the testimony was entirely sensational and gratuitous. Yet, Merchan was fine with humiliating Trump. The most maddening moment for the defense came at the lunch break, when Merchan stated, I agree that it would have been better if some of these things had been left unsaid. He then denied a motion for a mistrial based on the testimony and blamed the defense for not objecting more. That, of course, ignores the standing objection of the defense to Daniels even appearing and specific objections to the broad scope allowed by the court. You see how rigged, how corrupt this whole thing has been from the outset? You have a judge, he goes on to say, who should have recused himself given his daughter's major role as a democratic activist and fundraiser. What did he do? He placed a gag order on Trump that he wasn't allowed to say that. You have a gag order that is allowing a New York Supreme Court justice to regulate what the leading candidate for the presidency may say in an election on the weaponization of the legal system. You have a lead prosecutor who not only left the Biden Justice Department to revive this case, but once worked for the Democratic National Committee. You have a case based on two dead misdemeanors, shocked back into a life by a still mysterious theory of an undefined crime throughout the proceeding. No crime was specified. With the permission of the judge, and we see, of course, permission of the prosecution. You have an attempt by desperate Democrats to use the justice system, and I put this now in quote, to secure a win for Biden and to stop Trump from becoming the next president. But that attempt will awfully backfire, in my opinion. Professor Dershowitz, also a Democrat, wrote on May 23 in the Daily Mail. I watched in disbelief as Donald Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, told the jury one seeming lie after another. I wouldn't buy a used car from this man, let alone rely on his testimony to send a presidential candidate to prison. Most significantly, I haven't heard any evidence that Trump committed a crime. That was on May 23. Still no crime was specified. Never in my 60 years of practicing law and teaching and writing about the U.S. legal system have I seen such a weak criminal fraud case. New York Supreme Court Justice Juan Marchand should throw it out of court and rule that Cohen's testimony is so unreliable that the jury should not even consider it. This judge has the power to do so, but he will not. For even more shocking than the pathetic flaws of this case is the bias that the judge holds against Trump. After the defense called their key witness, former Cohen legal advisor Robert Costello, Judge Merchan made ruling after ruling denying Costello's ability to speak, dismissing his testimony as hearsay and irrelevant. I was shocked, he says, along with the other lawyers watching in the audience, the judge truly revealed his apparent unhinged prejudice against Trump when he exploded after Costello, a lawyer himself, expressed his surprise over the mystifying rulings. Merchan lost control over the perceived slight and angrily ordered the court police to clear the room. Do you raise your eyebrows at me? Merchan shouted at Costello. Did you stare at me? He sounded like a paranoid schizophrenic. Then Merchan threatened to exclude all of Costello's testimony against Cohen from the trial. I was 
flabbergasted, Dershowitz writes. The idea that a judge would punish Trump by denying him an opportunity to present evidence over the actions of a witness is preposterous, it's unethical, it's, unconstitution it's unconstitutional, I might add, it's unlawful. The whole thing is a sham and a farce. So, he goes on to say, could Trump be convicted despite all of this? Of course he can. The Manhattan pool consists largely of people who voted against Trump and don't want him to be elected in 2024, and that's the entire point. Miranda Devine wrote for the New York Post on May 26. If Donald Trump is found guilty in the first criminal prosecution of a former president, it will be a travesty of justice and a clear attempt to erect the 20 2000 or 2224 presidential election. But the ploy risks backfiring on Biden. It's clear to even Trump deranged observers that Manhattan Supreme Court acting justice Juan Mahan is a political hack. It was a no-brainer for Mahan to recuse himself, but he refused to do so. He gave free reign to prosecution star witness Michael Cohen, Trump's former lawyer, a convicted perjurer, a con man, who revealed in court that he stole $60,000 from the Trump organization because he was angry his bonus had been cut. By contrast, the judge muscled defense witnesses if he allowed them to be called at all. Michan's handling of the trial has been such a disaster that any guilty verdict will almost certainly be overturned on appeal. But that will only happen after the election, they say, at least not for a year or so, which allows Biden to smear his opponent as a convicted felon, which, of course, is the whole point, she writes. There's more. Newsmax wrote on May 29. Alan Dershowitz attacked a New York state law that allows a prosecution to go last when presenting closing arguments. That is ridiculous. In my many, many years of being a lawyer, the prosecution comes first, and then comes the defense in rebuttal, and then the prosecution may still have an opportunity to respond. Here it was just reverse. Here the defense comes first. By that time, no crime had been identified yet. So what's the defense going to say? It goes on to say, Dershowitz called that whole procedure unconstitutional. How does the defense go first when it doesn't even know what the crimes are that turned a misdemeanor into a felony? They had to wait until they heard it from the prosecutor's closing argument, and then they had no chance to rebut it. Dershowitz said it was on the defense team. He would have said he had nothing to say, and then he would have wait for the, waited for the prosecutors to present their case and then respond to it. But the problem is the judge might not have allowed that. The biased and, I would say, corrupt judge. And so Breitbart wrote on May 30, the jury just has to unanimously agree that something unlawful was done to promote Trump's election campaign, but they do not have to agree on what the unlawful thing was. Mark Levine, a lawyer, wrote, The grotesque trial charade gets even worse this morning. The Stalinist clown judge directed the jury that they can choose among three areas of crimes to convict the former president, but they don't have to agree on what the crime was. Completely, totally, utterly unconstitutional, because you have a unanimous verdict on the crime. And so we never know, unless somebody is going to talk, what they actually agreed upon. Those, I would say, biased jurors. It's amazing what can happen in the United States of America. It's the hallmark of a banana republic, of a third world corrupt dictatorship. But it's happening here in the United States of America. And so Trump was found guilty. Of course he was. He was convicted on criminal charges, and he is scheduled to be sentenced on the morning of July 11, just a few days before the convention of the Republicans will nominate him declare him to be the presidential candidate. 
And of course, it's going to be appealed, that's for sure, but this can take forever. First, it can go to the Court of Appeals, who knows what they are going to say, then it goes to the New York State Supreme Court, and even after that it might go to the US Supreme Court. By that time, <laughs> many, many years may go by. Of course, the reaction was clear. On May 30, Newsmax wrote that House Speaker Mike Johnson blasted the guilty verdict, calling it a shameful day in American history, which truly it was. Democrats cheered as they convicted the leader of the opposing party on ridiculous charges, predicated on the testimony of a disbarred convicted felon. This was a purely political exercise, not a legal one, he wrote. The weaponization of our justice system has been a hallmark of the Biden administration, and the decision today is further evidence that Democrats will stop at nothing to silence, dissent, and crush their political opponents. Very strong words. Other reactions have also come in from other areas around the world, condemning what is happening. Of course, some don't even understand. They are just happy that Trump was convicted, and they have no idea what the law says. They have no idea about what happened in their courtroom. They don't care. All they want, oh, Trump was convicted. Tucker Carlson said, now it's guarantee that Trump is going to be reelected unless they kill him first. Let me just say something about our jury duty system. Here, the judge gave ridiculous instructions. I don't know whether he knew from the prosecution from the outset what the crime would have been. They would charge Trump with, but it was never revealed, neither by the prosecution nor by the judge, until at the very end when the defense had no chance to respond. He gave these convoluted, unconstitutional instructions to the jurors, and the jurors were forced to abide by those instructions, whether they agreed with them or not. Because it was one hour long, he read those instructions, and then the jurors even asked for a repetition, because they didn't get anything in writing in the deliberation room. How can a true Christian be a part of such a crooked, corrupt system where a juror cannot have any opinion as to what is fair, what is right? He cannot most certainly look at the Bible saying, now wait a minute, there's something wrong with this thing here. See, and so there was not one juror who stood up and said, no, this is all corrupt, this is all wrong. No, they all went ahead. And so I have been saying this time and again before, I'm saying it again, as a true Christian, you cannot, you must not be a part of the jury duty system. You have to object to it. You have to tell the judge, I cannot participate. It is against my religious conviction. And we have a free book that on this, Obeying God Rather Than Man. Don't be afraid to stand up for God, because God has a lot to say about this corrupt legal system we have in the United States of America. I want to read to you from Isaiah chapter 59, talking about us today. And that's what it says, beginning in verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor is ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his eyes and his face from you, so he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue has muttered perversity. No one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. They dust, they dust trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. And then, of course, it has a lot more to say in this 59th chapter. Again, coming back to the point in verse 8, the way of peace they haven't known. There is no justice in their ways. They have made themselves crooked paths. Whoever talks and takes that way shall not know peace. Verse 9. Therefore justice is far from us, nor does righteousness overtake us. We look for light, but there is darkness, for brightness, but we walk in blackness, and on and on it goes. An indictment by God on this shameful 
justice system we have in this country. Don't ever tell me all the system works. The system works, yeah, for the bad people. We have prepared a free booklet. And lawlessness will abound. The Bible tells you that. No more righteousness, no more law. We have become a lawless society. We should understand that. And we should get back to God and ask him for forgiveness. Repent of this terrible travesty which is going on, not just in the Trump case here, all over in this country. Because God is very angry with the American people. And it's time that we realize that. And it's time for you to wake up if you are still asleep as well. So as for the free copies of these booklets, and until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.